action. Hey, hey, Jojo back with you here. We're out here in the place doing the thing. You know, we're out in nature. And last time you saw this car, we were wenching this hog on the trailer because this is our new summer project, okay? This is a 1962 Chrysler Newport. How okay. can you tell that it's from the 1960s? Well, because Chrysler in 61 and 62 had this iconic yet polarizing uh, canted headlight design. They only saw this on 61 and 62. Now the difference, if you come back here. What, was it popular back then when they did it? Um, it was either you really liked it or you really didn't. I personally really like it. I think it's really unique. The only other car that I know of that had canted headlights was like a 1958 or 59 Lincoln. But I like it on the Chrysler. I think it's well done. Not for everybody. Come on this way, Ben. You sure. think this is the oldest car you own? Yes, as I, as I know for a fact, this is the oldest car I own in my personal collection. If you come back here, you can tell it's a Newport because it has uh, all the garnish moldings. It lacks molding around the windows. It is a sedan, four-door sedan because of the B-pillar post, okay? It has what I call the dorky top. It has a real high top and a, and a short sloping back window. But if you look back here, here's another design element that I really like. In 1961, the Chrysler had real big fins on the back, okay? Like the movie Christine, that uh, car? That was a 58 Plymouth, but close. Here, stand back. Okay. For, 50, for, for 1960, the Chrysler had big fins, the tail lights were down here, and actually in the fin was just like, uh, like the reverse light. It was very odd. In 1962, Chrysler said fins are done. So what they did is they took the 61 body and they took the fin off and, and kind of remade this, but the, you can see it still retains some of the, like, the fin shape in the tail light. The Chrysler designer at the time, Virgil Exner, he wasn't really super happy. This is the last car that he had his hand in designing before he left Chrysler. He called this car the pluck chicken, like plucking feathers off of a chicken because he really liked the fins. He was all about the fins. This car doesn't have the fins, but it still has some iconic styling. So How can you tell it's a Chrysler? How can you tell it's a Chrysler? Because, it, because of the way that it is, you know. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. So here, what else do you like about this car, Ben? What's another design I kind of element? like how they designed the fins. It kind of looks cool to me. All right, let's hop Don't on Don't kill here. yourself. Yeah, I'll try not to. Oh. 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 No. Daryl. Daryl. Here it is. I think the hood latch is rusty. Oh, there it is. There. And then the release tail. Oh. Whew. Hold on. We got to. We got, a, we got an issue here, Hoss. All right, let's get these let's get these hood hinges. Oh yeah, like butter. Butter. Oh yeah. Butter. Butter. Oh gosh. My God, I'm trying to hold this up while hey, recording. No, it's not gonna. Look at those wide fenders here. here. Oh. oh my God, bro. She's lubed up now, brother. All right, what it do we got the here? Scared the crap out of me. Yeah, we got her though. There. So satisfying. It's like so a car unlike wash some of the other con. Chryslers that, that are out there, this does not have the torsion bar hood hinges. It's got kind of like some Chevy Chevy uh, C10 pickup truck style kind of style hinges. Let's get this hog. There we go. All right, look at me. So the thing about these old Chryslers is, you thought a square body hood was easy to bend? Well. Chrysler in 1961 and 2 said, hold my beer, because watch this. Look at that. Look at that, Ben. Oh, shit. I can't see it. Look at it. Oops. There you go. 12, 14 years before you were bending a hood on your Chevy pickup truck, you were bending a hood on a rusty-ass Chrysler. That's oh, I it see. Is it because that sucker's bending? Yep. So here's the deal. All Chryslers of this vintage had a big block, ranging from a 361 all the way up to a 413, okay? This is a 361. I already checked the numbers. Uh, where the heck? I think it's on right here. You can see it over here. Let me see the camera. Here you go. Uh, let's see if I can show the folks at home. Is that a turbo? 
No, it's not a turbo. Is that a filter intake? Right there, you can see it says three, six, and the guys at the plant you were so lost. lazy. You know, they just didn't stamp the one or the ones where I can't read it. But it's a 361, two barrel. I think it's got a Stromberg carburetor on it. Let me see here. Uh, yeah, Stromberg. So I'm sure it leaks like all the other Strombergs, but hey, you know, it's got, for a Newport, it's got power brakes. It's got power steering. It's got an alternator, which was a Chrysler thing in 62. Or let's see when that first came out, I'm not sure. I'm sure it's got points distributor. Uh, we still got the radiator. Ooh, what do we got here? Uh-oh, stop slip. Ooh, that's not boding well for the condition of the transmission. There's, oh no, there's a thing, a transmission fluid here. Uh-oh. Why did the old owner put transmission fluid Probably in Probably because she's a slippy old hog. So these push button torque flights have to, you have to adjust the bands on them. And I bet you they didn't do that and it slips a little bit. Here, let me see if we get any oil in the dipstick, Jimmy. Oh, look at there. It's over full. She's pretty brown. Probably did a lot of, a lot of neutral drops. That's all right. What's that? What? Neutral drops. Oh, neutral drops? When you, I can't tell you because then you'll do it to my cars when you're old enough to drive. All right, let's check the engine I don't, dipstick. I'll probably forget. Good. Oh yeah, look at that. She's she's almost full. Moment of truth. Ooh, not looking real. Not looking good for the home team here. I think she'll run though. I think she'll run. Somebody cobbed a coil out of it, so we can't do a will it run today. There's a the coil wire goes here. All right. Let me see if I can get the door open on the other side. I really want to show everybody the... Um, speedometer? Yeah, the speedometer. That is just the coolest thing, man. So, Dad, what is your favorite thing about being a mechanic? Oh, there's no good things about being a mechanic. It's fun to work on old cars, though. It's neat. What about, what about working at Chrysler? What's the fun thing about that? The is it like making friends? Yeah, no, it's the money. Da, da. Hey, look at this classy chassis. Oh, here. All right, Ben, we're going to need the, uh, here, hand me the camera. Oh, I just Watch knocked yourself. my leg. Oh, I'm going to drive this sucker now. No, no, I need to go get the WD-40. I left it out there. Oh, frig. I'm going to drive let's, this. Let's spray these hinges down. Spray it down. Those are the, yeah, these here are hard to come by. Spray down, Tony. All right, so here, let's look at this, what we got going on here. This is what the Chrysler calls their Astrodome instrument cluster. We can tell this is a new port or a lesser model because it only goes up to 120. The letter series cars of the Astrodome era have 150 mile per hour speedometer. If you look over here, this is the push button torque flight. Reverse, neutral, drive, two and one. This here is the turn signal, left and right. Don't touch it. We got to spray it down. Yeah, we'll, we'll touch that later, okay? And then a mirror image of that on this side is the heater controls. Off, fan, low and high, defrost, and then just regular air. And then this is the cold and hot. This car doesn't have air conditioning, so. If you put on um, cold, it just, just draws from the outside. Of course, we got our mirror here, dashboard mounted, the old rib raker, because they thought, man, if you come flying through the window, last thing on your way out before your head crushes through the windshield itself, you're liable to rake your ribs on your way outside of the car. Speaker grill, it's got a nice padded dash, seen some better days. Like we said earlier, Newport. This is a golden tone Chrysler radio. This car also has a unique lighting system in the unique dashboard. It's what they call electroluminescent display. Is it like those dartboard lights in there? It's kind of like neon lights. I'm hoping we can get it working so I can show you. The, re the way you park this car too is since it doesn't have park on the transmission is you use the parking brake. Lever operated and it's actually a little drum on the back of the transmission. Like all Chryslers, the key goes in upside down. 
upside down to a GM. It's right side up to a Chrysler fanatic, but to a GM guy, it's upside down. We actually got the keys with this. That's pretty nice. Oh, except it doesn't work. Yeah, we'll get to that. Oh, and then here, <laughs> look at here, all these knobs and switches. Oh, frick. Here's the oh power antenna up and down. Dome light over here is the map light. Map light, and then what's the back one say? Rear window defogger. No, just rear window. Yeah, it must be rear window. Maybe hey, gotta right ask. There. Here's the light, the headlights. Here's the wipers. Man, this thing is totally loaded. Where is the lighter? Cigarette lighter. Oh, here it is, right here. Oh, hey, okay. I got a question. What is a don't what? Where's the map on here? The map light? Yeah. I think it's, oh, right here. It's underneath the radio. There's a little light that'll shine down here. So before the GPS, they had like a, like a GPS that was made of paper and it was called a map. And if you wanted to read it when you're driving down the road, you'd turn this, this little light on as the map light. So the 300 series cars and the letter cars, the steering wheel on the top would be clear. Just like a, an old Pontiac. That is really cool. The horn doesn't work. The horn doesn't work because we ain't got no battery. And then this big, there's a big red light in here. When you have the parking brake on, that light is illuminated because it's also tied into the neutral safety. So the other thing that's kind of weird is the rear view mirror is actually mounted outside instead of on the door. It's on the top of the fender. That's not, that's probably the original location, but that's not an original mirror. Let's see what we got in the trunk. What do you say? There might be some good stuff in the trunk. What is what a design element though, you know? A lot of these here, this crossbar, this pop metal gets cracked here. Of course, Chrysler was never known for the quality of the plastic on their tail lights. So these being, you know, uh, horizontal or whatever, of course they cracked. Um, I want to say that reverse lights may have been an option, okay, on some of that, some of these cars. Because I've seen some of these pop metal things that have like a blank off plate in here for like some real low end stuff. Uh, the back seat had a yucky old tent, like a gazillion, gazillion soup cans and dog food cans. I really didn't check this car out. I just went and. He's like, I have 62 Chrysler, that's what I want for it. I'll be, obviously, I talked him down, and then I'm like, all right, I'll be down to get it. So, Ben got bored. You know how kids are. Let's go check out the trunk. Oh, oh romance novels. Yeesh. Oh, dig this. Oh, yeah, like I said, look at there. That one's broken. But the, but the bar's intact, so we might be able to, might be able to fix on that. Here's the, here you go. This is typical, right? Bust it up, used up. Uh, what else we got back here? Looks like we got a 14 inch wheel. It's like, oh, look at this. This is actually pretty significant. This is a power transformer for the electroluminescent display on the gauges. What this does is takes 12 volt DC automotive energy, and I want to say it steps it up to like. 250 or 300 volts AC and that's what runs the illumination on that crazy dashboard it uses AC energy and it also runs the illumination for the radio everything else is 12 volts so this is kind of an important piece oh look here's another one whoever had this car knew enough Oh, that one's even original with the paper on the back. Whoever had this car before me knew enough to save that kind of stuff because it's hard, that's really hard to find. Um, looks like there's some rocker guards. Of course, a Newport never would have had rocker guards. Oh, here's another stainless wiper arm. Oh, look at here, a set of 300 wheel covers. Those look like they're off of a later, like maybe a 68, through 70. I don't know if they got into the, if the, that hubcap style got into the fuselage era. I'm not sure. I think they were pretty, I think they were all slab side. Oh, what is this? This is a, this is, is this two barrel or four barrel intake? Oh, look at the rust hole. It's for a two barrel. It's got that big goofy. That might fit an AFB too. I'm not sure. Single snorkelage. 
a little mouse house going on in there. What else we got back here? Ooh, what's this? Uh, this is a pretty good, well, this is actually a pretty good piece. Usually these are broke off. These actually go left hand, it's driver's side. This goes above the script on the side of the car and they're usually always busted off. That's a pretty good one. Uh, what's this? There's another piece of four door trim. Some jack stuff is probably not to this car. Port a wall. Oh, hit my melon. Actually, this trunk is in a bad shape. It's got a little trunk lid. It's got a little yuckies in it. What do we got here? Classic primer for this car. Oh, uh, we might find a use for that down the road. Is this a Chrysler part and co? Well, I'm sure it would fit. Oh, it's even got the nut. I'll be dead gone. Hey, you know what? Hey. You know what? Hey, hey man, man. We got it. This thing's got it going on. It's got some potential. It's a huge monster project, but uh, you know, look at that baby. Style, elegance. That's what I was talking about here. See, look at, see how that is moments from breaking? That, Let's see if we can get you underneath this hog. I really haven't been underneath it myself, like I said. Uh, you know, it's not, I don't know how well you guys can see. It's not terrible. It's not terrible. Um, if you will note, look at that drive shaft. It's got a U-joint on the front right up. There's a parking brake drum, and then it has a U-joint. So that means this car, the drive shaft has been reworked because originally this car would have what they call a ball and trunnion on the back of the transmission and that's like some kind of ancient the best i can gather it's some ancient version of a cv axle very odd looking but you know what the floors up here don't look bad looks like it was factory undercoated or uh, undercoated at one point still got the exhaust i'm sure if this thing ever does fire up it'll immediately blow a giant hole in it what are you going to do? The rear floors don't look half bad, do they? Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. Yeah. Well, there you have it. Classic American iron. All American iron. All American iron and iron oxide, <laughs> being that it's a Chrysler. Hey, I think the Wolfpack got what it takes to get this hog fired up. I think so. I think we can make a yeah. crank. It's probably going to be a wiring nightmare because, you know, because Chrysler. But it's cool enough to try to give it the old college try on getting this hog to light off. So, hey, if you like what you're seeing, you want to see some more Crew Cab Chrysler content, hit that subscribe button or tune back in. Episode 2, we'll get it off the trailer. We'll get some air on the tires and we'll get see if we can't get her to light off. But Probably not. Probably not. Hey. Beautiful Easter Sunday. Get out there. Get out there in nature and do the thing in the place. So, catch you on the next one. It's going to be content.